All right. Welcome to the Overwatch Xbox Community Rival Tier matchup between Aspire and Communism. This will be the first match of Week 5 in the community coming in hot. I'll be your host, Swift63, joined tonight by Tented and Poyo. Tented, Poyo, how are you guys? How are you going? Doing, doing well. <laughs> Probably set you guys up for failure asking for <laughs> both of you at the same time. Simultaneous <laughs> responses? Yeah. yeah. You, didn't, you didn't lead us in there. Yeah, long. no, no, no. We'll fix it going forward. I'm going to run the camera this evening. Um, I believe Poyo is going to be giving you the play by play and then Tented bringing the uh, color commentary from there. Map pool tonight, starting off on Volskaya. Second map's going to be Nepal, and then we're going to close it out on Rialto. Uh, if you're new to the community and not familiar with how we play, we do play a uh, best of three series, but here in the OXC, we do play all three maps. Uh, that is because we do play, uh, at the end of the season, the map differential or overall map wins end up being the tiebreaker. So I'm going to play all three maps tonight. Should be a pretty heated contest. Aspire coming in, looking for the first win of the season. Uh, communism continuing, looking to continue their win streak and move to three and one. Both of these teams actually ended up having to reschedule their week four match due to uh, Hurricane Florence activity, but uh, getting back into it now. Um, Tented, how are we looking from the captains, man? We got the rosters all set up and good to go? We are ready to go. So we are going to start. Right on. So we're going to go ahead and load up the first lobby here. Uh, game intro for Volskaya coming at you. Um, while we load this up, I, I, Volskaya is one of my least favorite maps, but Poyo, I want to get kind of your take. Can you kind of walk us through what your thoughts are uh, for <laughs> for Volskaya? Personally, I dislike to use in general. I, I don't know if that's a fair... A fair I think all of us can say that. <laughs> I, think that's a, I think that's kind of a universal consensus in the community, but I think first point is pretty interesting because I think a lot of teams hold up in like competitive, hold up by that bus. But I think really when you're like looking at a more competitive setting, you're probably going to see people more holding back by the point. So I'm curious to see if these guys are going to do that. But on first point, I think it's pretty solid. I like the right flank or the left flank around if you're coming from attack, right if you're on defense, um, where you have either triple tracer blank. You can actually use the sim teleporter around, so I'm curious if we'll see that tonight. Um, but second point, that's the one where it can be kind of a grind if they ever run a May, which it looks like we might see, because I think uh, blue is is uh, blue aspire in here. Then they're probably with the May. They're probably gonna be holding up closer to the choke, I'd imagine. And second point, May can be a real nightmare if your team doesn't want to take the the right high ground. So we'll see what's we'll see what happens. I do want to jump in here real quick before the map gets started and we do the rundown of the rosters. Um, we have started our first inaugural OXC breakdown. Those will be hosted every Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Um, we are asking the community for clips or of top plays. So if you see a, everyone in chat, everyone joining us tonight, if you see a play or you see something on camera that uh, you felt deserved, please clip it. We go through all of them uh, to sort them out, and then we'll play back top 10 in the, uh, in the OXC breakdown every Tuesday. Take it away. So it looks like we're going to be seeing goats. It looks like we're going to see goats roll out from the from uh, attack here. So expect this to be a very broad match here. So I'm curious to see what May can do because now that the May has the, the uh, she can freeze multiple targets at once. She's really going to be doing work on them here. And yeah, right there you see the May wall immediately take separate the team, and it's going to be an easy cleanup from there. Uh, so now it's going to be a kind of a stagger fight, see if they can get any staggers, but yeah, very nice deep hold, first hold from uh, defense here. Something that was interesting on the side of the Spire is that they used that May wall to have the Zen on that, on this kind of high ground where you really cannot be touched by that Goat's comp at all. Being able just to charge his alternate fire down in range, I think that's an interesting strategy. Yeah, it's going to be up to the Diva on their team to, to focus, force them out, but if, he, if she, they can't get in... All right, Miss May. While this is their opportunity, they better they better push while they have it. While that's on cooldown. Oh, beautiful shatter. That's gonna shut the push right down and take the Moira ult with it. You can clearly see that Aspire's put some thought into this defense. Um, and it doesn't look like uh, it looks like we're gonna be getting a switch up here from attacking here. It looks like they're going for a more traditional dive here. 
They're still. Oh, I was gonna say, are they keeping the rig? It looks like not. So I bet you they're either gonna dive here on the McCree or they're gonna go for the Zen. All right, then Winston still for McCree. All right, Doomfist takes the mayhem. Oh wow, Halo Splinter striking back with the D-Mech. Trans comes out. We'll see if this uh, helps him sustain. It's about an even fight. Attack does get the first tick. Diva does get remaxed here. All right, I think uh, I think this is safe to say it's a defensive hold. It's uh, it's just gonna be clean up here. Diva is demaxed again. She's taken out. Uh, now Mercy's stuck behind. Oh, Halo Spartan takes her out. <coughs> so we now we have the uh, swap onto the uh, the Sombra on defense here, which is traditionally strong, but. Ever since the Sombra rework, she doesn't get, uh, she's not quite as busted with the health back farming anymore. It looks like both teams are now running the Sombra, yeah. yeah. Both teams have Sombra, that's interesting. Yeah, Sombra is so strong now in, competitive, in like, team-oriented play because she just gives you, I think, an underrated, uh, underrated thing about her. She gives you unlimited, essentially unlimited information about the other team's position and spawns and all that thing. McCree's hacked right now, so yeah. Easy, easy cleanup. Oh, oh, we've play. lost a player. If you've got the pause, there it is. Yep. We have lost a player. Yep. So we'll go ahead and start the timer. Um, we do here in the Overwatch Xbox community where <laughs> we understand, you know, it's, we live in the real world. Some people get uh, get disconnected. Oh. <laughs> you know, internet drops, that kind of thing. So we do we do allow them to rejoin the match. We do give the both teams a three-minute pause pool. So timer's already started. We're going to give them about three minutes to come back. If they do rejoin... We'll just unpause it and keep playing as normal. If they don't, we'll unpause it. They'll we can, finish out this map man down. We can down. sub them in. Can they not Do get we sub, sub in, in people? Or or they you sub when you... Nope. Five. They can sub when they swap sides. All right. Yeah. Got so right. they'll finish out the, so the attack the or... Yeah, they'll finish out their attack man down. Then when they swap sides, if they've got somebody in the lobby on their bench, we can just sub them in real quick. Gotcha. Yep, learning a learning a little bit yeah, every it really day. Yeah, sucks. It really sucks for attack here because they have their they have their uh, they have their support alt up. I mean, obviously this Who fight was the, already uh, kind of lost. Who was the It was their Genji. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was their yeah. Genji. That's unfortunate. I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure he was at his dragon blade. He had to have been yeah, close. I think he was at seventy some odd percent. Yeah. So I mean, looking at attack here, they need to use that. Lucio ult before <laughs> Sombra charges hers up, or she's just gonna immediately pop her ult the second Lucio pops his, and they make a push, and it's just gonna be a slaughter. Cause you know that's just how it works if you're not familiar with how Sombra Lucio <laughs> barrier interaction works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I play quite a bit of Lucio, so I know how that feels. Yeah, oh, you. He is back. Like he's back. Yeah, I was gonna say Poyo. Um, you were talking earlier about the May while they get. Oh, we're never mind. We're good to go. <laughs> we're good to go. Huge grab. All right. I mean, it looks like they popped quite a few walls there, but they did nano the Sombra, so she did get quite a bit of. She got about 30% from that grab. So. Nanoed Sombra. That's something you don't see every day. Yeah, I mean, an interesting thing a lot of people though. don't take into account about about nano is it really helps um, when you nano like other targets, it really accelerates their alt economy. So you don't necessarily have to use it in an alt combo. You can actually use it to help your other teammates farm their alts. So that's actually another use I think get, gets underused, especially at lower ranks. Yeah, he's just gonna take high ground here and try to poke, poke, poke out that uh, poke at that Reinhardt, but. I would be surprised if we don't see a shatter here. Uh, we're gonna probably be seeing an EMP coming up in this last fight here. There it is. Uh, Mercy's hacked, but it doesn't look like they're really gonna capitalize on that. Doesn't look like they need to though. Yep, this will be a. I'm gonna predict a full hold at this point here. Just Genji left. This is gonna be easy cleanup at this point. <clears throat> Rather unfortunate that we had the DC there. Uh, on, as you can see, he's already up to 91% on his blade, so we would have seen a blade that last fight. 
Also, Sombra died with her EMP, which is also unfortunate. So. Yeah, she charged it right, right at the last second there on the last one, but. Uh, I didn't. I didn't quite catch that. Yeah, sixty percent though. I mean, that's that's nothing to scoff at. First point, Volskaya. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Volskaya is definitely first point. Is ever defender, defender, Lee. God, I cannot speak. Uh, just simply do that. <laughs> you only really have one option. Two, technically, if you want to go around the left, but not everyone can go there unless you have a sim teleporter. So, speaking that of sim teleporter, so hard. Yeah, that's what I was Ooh. saying. I was saying earlier, I, are we gonna see that that flank around? Because one of the strats our team came up with, and I don't know if it's quite original, <laughs> was was put me on the bastion, put put a uh, put hyper on the hyper. the uh, thing, Seven. and run double double main tank, flank around, take the right me, high ground. Me and Oh, that was fun. Yeah, and we just uh, that we was just during preseason, in point. fact. Yeah, yeah, that was quite season. funny. And it looks like we're gonna be seeing something similar here as Halo Spartan is I, on fashion. Something that I saw so, in uh, Australian contenders is uh, that same thing, but on Temple of Anubis, where they went onto that bridge of the high ground and then went straight to where you know teams are normally in comp would hold, and then they went to back of the point, which was. So I think that's what we're gonna see, just exactly. Like that, just going to point to point as they choose and just kind of force their hand to where they play. Uh, hoping we're not having some disc issues, connection issues with uh, the red, with uh, our Genji again. Okay, he's moving. I was gonna say, he's on Hanzo now and he's just stalled out. <laughs> uh oh, he's stalling again. He's not made it to the point. Alright, he's, he's made it. He might be just checking some things. Hopefully we do not All right, so I'm guessing here we're gonna be seeing the, uh, the flank round, as stated earlier. Yep, there it goes. Uh, it looks like Red Team is already. Uh, should I use their names? Just a question. Hundred percent. Yeah, usernames. Like it's all good. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. So it looks like a team of spires moans in around. Uh, they do have the somber in back, hiding behind. Uh, but the second she uncloaks here, those sim turrets are gonna take her out. Yeah. So, there's been no picks yet, alright, as I say that, Ryan falls, he's probably gonna fall pretty quickly here, as they, without a main tank, they really don't have any way to block the, all that bashing and other kinds of damage. So, I expect this to probably fall pretty quickly here, and I'm gonna... Yikes. Uh, Ryan charging off the point. That's kind of funny. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's in his just playing this think overall. Um, of, uh, something that um, I was kind of expecting is, especially with all these map pools, map pools, guys, maps in this map pool, is that notice looking at Nepal, Rialto, and kind of Volskaya, is seeing if the Widowmaker or Haunter would ever come in. Now we did see um, communism with the. Uh, Hanzo, but it unfortunately did not work out for them, so I'm I'm expecting yeah. to see them. On the other team, but at the same time not necessarily get run over. So yeah, um, I, it's good to see that, uh, I think it was, it was, uh, Communism, yeah, who started off on the base, <coughs> uh, but then made or made the switch to dive, um, didn't work out for them, unfortunately, we did have a, I think, was it, uh, Communism you talked trash did bad, did he, did, did he DC? Not Correct, sure. yeah, it was, yep. yeah, yeah. alright, so yeah, unfortunately, he deceived, so no telling how it would have gone, had that not happened. It's just hard. I couldn't. I didn't know quite if he was alive during the fight or not, so I don't know if that took him out. But yeah, one way or another, you still lose all charge and have to regroup. So rather unfortunate, but hopefully this second game can uh, you know, avoid that. Yep. So we're gonna check in with the captains here, see if there's any subs or need any updates that need we need to make. From the uh, from the roster standpoint, mm -hmm. we're gonna go ahead and get the get Nepal loaded up. That's gonna be the second map of the evening. Um, we're gonna go and slide over to the intermission screen. We will be right back, guys.
<laughs> All right. So it looks like we're in the process right now of getting both of the team's final rosters ready to go for Nepal. Um, Volskaya falling first point. Aspire going up 1-0 on the series so far. Uh, coming out swinging, man. It looks like they want that first that first week win here in week five. Um, I know, Poyo, we talked a little bit about the Volskaya overall. What were kind of your, your takeaways, your thoughts from that map? So we did end up seeing the uh, the sim plank, which I was really hoping we'd get to see. Um, it worked out pretty well, I'd say. I don't think it was necessarily the blow that they were looking out, but as soon as the Rhine fell, I think the first point kind of fell with it. Um, and on defense, I really liked the May coming out in the first thing. I don't think teams play against May enough, or you know, with May enough to really, you know, necessarily be used to that. And so it kind of caught them by surprise. It kind of really. Shut down that goats comp, forced to switch, but uh, the spire really adapted with them there. With their own kit sw swaps coming out, so we saw this may switch to Sombra, whatnot, and uh, yeah, in the end, uh, an unfortunate disconnect on communism, but you know, uh, who knows where it would have gone. But uh, a spire held strong, so pretty impressed with their uh, their defense there. How yeah. about you, Tenet? Do you uh, what did you think? Um, on the side of spire, uh, TQSH. He did an amazing job. I think they did a great job putting all their, uh, a lot of their healing resources, especially Bianca. I saw always throwing his, uh, the nade to the Rhine to make sure he gets a lot of healing to keep him up. Because Rhine, if you don't know, could do a lot of damage if he just keeps on swinging. Honestly, out of any DPS character, if he gets a lot of resources. So I think that was something that was. That Aspire did a really good job was making sure that that Rhyme was always up and being able to do damage. Looks like both teams are ready to go, though. Right on. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and load it up. So, coming off of Volskaya, 2CP map, I don't think I don't think anyone enjoys playing 2CP. We're going to go straight into I mean, my favorite game mode, right? Control part, point. So. That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> we, didn't, so. we, didn't, we didn't get to the worst part of 2CP. Nepal, Nepal is one of my favorites. Not my favorite. My favorite is Hero, which is a couple weeks ahead, like, but I'm fine with yeah, Nepal. Yeah. So coming well, in here, see if we're gonna be seeing them. run it down, man. Run it down, brother. I was gonna say I was gonna expect the Arisa here. Um, a lot of times teams go just will go either they'll go to that high ground staircase here and they'll set up two Arisas and they will go for those cheeky pulls right down the center. Um, so you can probably expect to see a lot of like a few boops at least in this map I'll be disappointed if someone doesn't end up in the pit, but a lot of the times the two the two polarizing aspects You see is you either <laughs> see kind of like a bunker with like one team kind of ha like Keeping a DPS off in the back and making them hard to dive and the other team It looks like is kind of going for like a hybrid dive comp here So I'm pretty curious to see like, you know exactly what was going on here uh, I can't necessarily tell you that these teams aren't completely trolls with the Torbjorn on the other team, so I'm curious to see if uh, we end up getting oh, a switch here. Houston but, Outlaws yeah. fans. Whoa, whoa, yeah, easy yeah. there with the Torb hate. <laughs> nah, they they just like to mess around. Houston Outlaws like to mess around and spawn. You mean Muma? Muma likes to mess Muma, around. Muma, yeah. So I guess this uh, Torb Hammond is coming out. serious. Hammond coming out. That's interesting. Hammond Torb. That, that's, that's interesting, kind of. Aspire with a very unorthodox team on here. Um, Hammond's already in the back line. Uh, he's left. Oh, he gets away. He, the Ana woke him up. That's unfortunate. That was a uh, a free one there. There, so Hammond's just doing what Hammond does, which is uh, going the back line and feed. Uh, wow, caster curse right there. But anyway, um, yeah, it's just going to be a brawl right here, but um, with them losing their. With them losing their main tank, or well, their Hammond, I could probably see this falling. Yeah, there's the boop. Hog right into the pit. Torb does answer back here with a pick onto their Hanzo, which is big, and Hammond's already back. So we'll see if the Diva gets caught out here. She does have D Matrix, but that's got to be running low right about now. I'm expecting a boop right here. Oh, just barely. One more hit. Let's try to get that cheeky boop in, but uh, did not work out. You notice on the side of like both teams, on uh, on uh, communism side, they have two characters who can't boot, and on the other side, they have they have three characters who can't boot. So 
We'll see what happens here. Yep, Lucio trying to get that Buku again. Communism looks like they're getting forced back here, so. It seems more to me like this, this, uh, this Orbjorn is being kind of used as like a, a, re a pseudo reaper here. Double boot coming out from, uh, DP GJ DPS Sankey, but it doesn't matter with the Moira finishing him off here. I'm curious, if red team went in right now, they could probably actually take the point because uh, blue team isn't all the way back yet, but it looks like they're going to move in. Communism has here. all their ults except yeah. the team of all I was about to say, communism is sitting on a plethora of ults right now. Yeah, I, I have been focused so much on the game, I haven't came here. Mines come out. Oh my gosh, all the ults are getting popped. We have a Busio right now. Uh, not sure what that accomplished. Probably just an accident. Molten core was popped. All right. Only all left actually supercharger, which is not available at the moment. So it looks like Aspire is gonna actually uh, hold here. The thing I really like about Hammond is how disruptive he can be, uh, and actually get away with a lot of it. As you see, he's just going into spawn, no fear. Uh, TK TQ kind of went overextended a little bit, but yeah. Hammond's kind of an interesting hero at the moment. I don't think anyone has quite figured him out 100%. Um, so as I mentioned, yeah, there's the soldier kind of sitting in the back, just trying not to get dived. Um, Corp does have this turret built in the back. We'll see if it actually actually it puts down much damage. Uh, Supercharger has come out, so uh, Hammond just uh, trolling them out here. Gets away. So yeah, Spire did a great job of just hiding that supercharger. A lot of times you don't want to fight. You don't want to fight when the whole team has 50% more damage, as that's just a recipe for a disaster. Um, all right, so they're, they're pushing them into the spawn here. They're just trying to keep them off the point uh, so that they don't get that that touch, and uh, they don't want to have to deal with the cell fight here. So everyone's just popping all of a sudden, yeah. Uh, Communism is forced off the point. They couldn't even get back to touch. So that was a nice zoning there, recognizing they had a good uh, they had a good awareness of the time there, and really just pushed them in their spawn and didn't allow them to recover there. I think yeah, the, something that was interesting was uh, seeing that Torb. I think what communism was kind of hard to adjust, and that's the thing with like May, Bastion, and Torb, and you know those type of heroes is that you're really not sure what to do because you rarely ever see them so you're not really gonna plan on to strategize against them and then they kind of just come out of nowhere and you're like what do we do so you i think communism's got to be a bit better on their adjusting on the fly i think that's what's gonna if they want to turn it around I think personally, I would have liked to have seen a bar of mercy come out there, as Torb is generally pretty bad against that. And as you know, Soldier has gotten to receive the buff here, but yeah. Uh, Reaper is such a great bar all around this point. And this point, while it's a good bar map, I think it's even an even better Reaper map, in my opinion. And both teams are actually running the Reaper, I just noticed. My bad. Yep, I'd agree with you 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah, Reaper, I yeah. think a lot of people underestimate his power here, especially with that buff to that the auto reload and the 50% rate thing, the switch, the cancel. Reaper is a menace for tanks, and you just kind of have to hold shield when there's a Reaper in front of you. You can't really, you can't really get away with much. Um, so yeah, Aspire puts that to great use. So that was kind of what their that Torbjorn was acting as, like last time. Yep, here's the Reaper right in the middle of their team, just brawling right again. So. Wraith does come out from both Reapers, so... Yep, I'm Hoodies takes him out again. Great Reaper play altogether. Hammond just being annoying here, but he's gonna get pinned. Alright, so he's probably gonna get taken on the fight for a little bit. Reaper res again. Yeah, so we're seeing very brawly comps come out right now. Doomfist Reaper out of, out of uh, Communism and uh, Reaper McCree out of uh, Aspire here. Doomfist is out of his uh, abilities here, so I'd expect to see him follow him. Yep, there he goes. Alright. Great use of ults there, that really cemented their, cemented the point in their favor here. So it's already at 63%, so that was a really long first fight there, where 
you know, neither team quite lost. And it looks again like Aspire's just gonna force them right back in their spawn. I would expect to see Ryan fall here to that Reaper Lucio combo here. Yep. So yeah, I think we're gonna see communism take the point here as uh, they uh, got a little over, Aspire got a little overzealous and extended a little far, but uh, they're gonna get it to 99 here with that Hammond, just going around the Rosie here. Way yep, the Rosie. Shatter's just gonna put this way down, yeah. Mercy taking out Ana, I don't know what, quite what happened there, but yeah, Aspire needs to back off here. Something that I haven't seen, at least on from my side, uh, watching a few, a lot of the o other OXE games, is seeing this Winston Hammond type comp. Because usually uh, you would see a Hammond Diva type comp, and if not, then Diva Winston and Hammond. So definitely kind of an odd decision from Aspire, but one that is working. Yeah, I would really put a lot of this down. Not to like say DPS is carrying, but their Reaper is causing all kinds of problems for the enemy team. And just as I say that, Halo Scar can come out with a double here. Uh, Ham and Mike, yeah, I'd be surprised not to see the flip here and the map go on to expire. It's just clean up at this point, and I actually think, yep. Yeah, H Halo Spartan. Right into spawn. Halo Spartan has been playing out of his mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, first map, he was popping. Whenever there's not a kill for him to have, he was still putting body shots on the tanks, just farming up that Deadeye. So, I... It was easy to not not pay attention to him sitting in the back because he wasn't necessarily yeah here, it's, here it is uh, securing kills right away but building up that dead eye for these targets is incredible yeah man yeah Looks like Aspire will take that final map, um, not final map, sorry, the second map, and even though they have won the series, they'll go to a third map, so it is definitely possible for Communism to get that third map and help them with those map wins that will matter definitely when we get to the last two weeks where it's playoff time and people are fighting for those final playoff spots, so. Definitely interesting to see how Rialto will go. Oh, 100%, and last season there were a couple of teams that had the exact same number of week wins, but because they split every week, did ended up not making the playoffs as a result. So, still a lot to play for here, especially since Communism's already split 2-1 earlier this season. I, uh, Indeed. Next mult map coming up is Rialto. I mean, I guess it's a very good Faro map. Uh, I'm curious to see if we'll see any Widow, but yeah, Faro is about the only pick I can kind of like for C coming out for sure. Uh, beyond that, Orisa is very strong. You set her up on that right high ground that first and just, you know, really make them think about crossing that bridge. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see what uh what team comps these both teams have come up with here for Rialto. As it is the newest map, so it's not necessarily one that there's been a meta for for the last year, you know. Oh, like for, are the other two maps forgetting did. about uh forgetting about old Busan, man? <laughs> oh yeah, Busan. I, I, oh my gosh, dude, I haven't, I haven't, I do not competitive. It's not a map, right? It's fair. Yeah, that's not my mentality. I haven't, I haven't played Busan at all. So, yeah, I actually just got about. When does that actually rotate in? Oh, I'm not 100% on that. It's, um, it's gotta be coming up. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. When it does go live in comp, we Usually will add it to the uh, to the map pool for the OXC. Uh, generally speaking, we like last season, we added Rialto in as a playoff map for that exact reason. So, wouldn't be surprised if we end up doing the same thing here. But yeah, I was curious to see. I was yeah. So players that have been just like I want to highlight right now, uh, Halo Spartan really was this like a huge part of the first map and as you saw also a huge part of the second map here just pretty uncontested on that McCree both times uh, just allows him to put out damage it's you know an uncontested McCree with like little pressure on him uh, can really take over a game and I think 
I think communism really needs to take a like do a better job of just shutting down, getting on, putting applying some pressure onto these targets, um, like Halo Spartan and Lime Hoodies and just some of these like kind of big carries that just put out a lot of damage. Um, because in my opinion, one of the two ways to win a fight. Oh, well, actually, there's a lot of ways to win a fight. But <laughs> uh, a, kill, kill all the other people, a, duh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Let's kill everyone. No. Um, is if, if you take out a main team, that can really cripple a team overall because the tanks fall, and then, you know, everything kind of goes after that. You can pick their ma a main tank and just, you know, prevent a lot of, like, you know, reduce their overall damage reduction, you know, damage protection. Uh, huge. But also, if you can really pick their big damage dealers over a sustained fight, it really makes a difference because suddenly your healers just don't have to put out output as much. So, yeah, if you can pick like a big, you know, one of those big parts, it, it really everything kind of comes with it after that. Couldn't say it better Trying myself. To find the uh, swap feature and I do not see it. It's all good. We're going to uh, take a quick break, everyone. We're going to check in with the captains, make sure the rosters are all set and ready to go. Uh, bear with us just a quick second and we'll get it, uh, we'll get Rialto all loaded up. Alrighty, Rue. Looks like we're good to go. Uh, I think we've got the ready set from both sides. Tinted, can you confirm we're good to go? We are good to go. We are starting right now. Right on, buddy. We're going to go ahead and load up uh, Rialto here. This is one of my favorite maps, actually. Um, we've talked a lot about Farah tonight, and uh, I think it's a phenomenal map for Farah. I don't know how you guys feel. Um, Poyo, maybe you feel the same way, but like uh, the, the roof lines, right, create just some incredible lines of sight, uh, great places for Farah to work in and out of cover. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I would definitely. Um, I throw that there. Um, yeah, any any map with a good skybox and a lot of vertical cover for Farah is just great. Especially when the roof here, she can kind of just peek up over this thing. Uh, a lot of times when you see on defense here, is you see a lot of people kind of just taking up 
uh, right in front of the bridge or right in the alleyway right after you turn the corner of the bridge on defense. So you'll see some people on those high grounds and whatnot. And uh, Faru can just fly up right over that building and just rain rockets down right into the middle of that team. Uh, so it makes her a really a really good pick on this map in particular. Um, I don't. I actually would. I would. I would beg to say that uh, Rialto is the best far map in the game, in my opinion. Uh, probably right after that, I would say somewhere around Oasis. But <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, you're not gonna hear me contest I mean, it, man. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, that's how I feel. Uh, I actually had a Faro one trick account uh, for a while, and yeah, I got her up. I'm not a god Faro, but whenever I saw Rialto, you bet I was happy. So. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, if you're going to run up Farah, you definitely need a Mercy, and I don't know why we're talking about it, because it doesn't look like anyone's going to be running that Farah, so, interesting. Um, yeah, so what, what do we know, right? Like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I guess. So it looks like we're going to see the Double Sniper swaps. come out here. Um, double Sniper come out here. Uh, on attack, as I kind of assume is going to happen, is we're seeing kind of that dive comp again. Um, not traditional D Winston Diva, but uh, it's going to be a Winston... Uh, Winston Hammond here. Um, but yeah, that Arisa is going to be set up on high ground again, and she's probably going to just threaten to pull people off here. But as seen as it is a dive comp coming out, um, oh well, it's not a dive comp anymore. Well, it's a weird It's a comp. triple it's, tank. It's a triple it's tank. It's a double Winston main. Hammond. Yeah, double it's main weird. tank. Interesting. So yeah, uh, Widow does fall, but it looks like they're headed back and it's gone right away. Curious to see if any team comp swaps they're are making, coming up here. They're making adjustments, I bet you. Yeah, they're making adjustments. Yeah, team Something's red happening. team is... Uh, is that Aspire? Aspire's on red, yeah. Yeah, Aspire's yep. on the Aspire's red. Aspire's on so attack Aspire right now. Aspire is sitting in spawn currently. Uh, not quite sure what we're seeing come out here. They're probably talking strat, but... The Rhine spinning in circles is kind of confusing me. Um... Are they oh, I have a uh, message. What's yeah, it looks like we oh, need to switch the spectators. Switch spectators. I will do that. Oh, uh, well, let's restart our bed, right? No, I we don't necessarily have to restart it. Let's just go ahead and pause it. Yep. We'll just swap the spectators I mean, around. Lose a lot of time. That's why I thought we... I was wondering. God dang it. I, I always pause the D-bed, so that's my bed. All right. That was my bad. I'm sorry. Bit That's alright. Spectators didn't really hurt anything. Alright. So actually the map will on. now become go underway for real this time. Uh, yep, so Widow's taking the right, the right high ground. Now it looks like she's just going to be going back to her spawn. So Winston is going to... I think Winston here is main eye job here before he got killed. Is to kind of like force them off the high ground, but it doesn't look like... Uh, communism has any interest at all in uh, taking that high ground here. And it the looks Spire perfectly no content. Uh, that is that's something that's interesting. interesting. I really don't know what I'm looking at right now, so uh, yeah, continue on. Uh, <laughs> Spire is probably going to keep getting dumpstered here until they really switch to a real comp, so that I'm not sure if, very they're, interesting. If, they're, if they're throwing or. So that's very odd. I know they won the game, but all right, they actually have a healer now. Teams are wrong. All right, we have a team wrong. So we're gonna have to restart. Teams are apparently wrong, even though they both said that they're ready. But it's it's cool. Whatever. Six <laughs> spectators. So true is spectating wrong teams. Switch sides, but then switch benches. I was told. Yeah, you talk trash <laughs> bad as red.
All right, sorry about that, guys. We had some technical difficulties. Had to had to restart the match, but we're good to go here. So <laughs> we'll see if we can't get it get it right the second time. I was wondering why they uh, where Reinhardt was spinning and spawn. That was kind of interesting. Yeah, some questionable tactics coming out. From I Don't didn't know because the like they, they threw the Rhine on the car. I was like, are they like waiting to see what they have and then like change it up or? But it's always something. Without further ado, we will start. <laughs> we will get officially underway. Yeah, so, you know, coming out here, it looks like we don't, we're not going to have a Pharah this time either, even though we get a second try at it. Nope. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like we're going to have a, a Widow either. More traditional dive, though. Coming out. Yeah, Sombra's, ex yeah, actually on defense, though. Um, it looks like they're kind of running an uh, interesting triple tank lineup, um, except, you know, it would be kind of what you would see with the Goats, except for... Um, one of the heat supports switched out for a Hanzo uh, coming coming out from Aspire, and uh, from from the defense they're actually running dive on defense, which I'm not super familiar with how that works on this map exactly, but uh, I'm curious to see it. Um, high octane aggression, all the attacks all the time. I, I'm guessing, yeah, yeah. Dive is generally quite a bit harder to run on defense just because it requires a lot more like uh, timing and you know whatnot. Uh, it's not quite as easy. You get punished a lot harder and. But exactly right there, they do exactly what they need to do, take out the, the main damage dealers on the other team. Uh, however, they're going to get anti-healed down and just out by um, by Aspire. So, uh, it looks like they're weaving their Ana out to dry here in a 1v1 with their with the Genji here. We'll see if he comes around, but it looks like the Ana is actually winning. Um, so, uh, respawn advantage coming in here. Uh, Communism is going to have to take back here, and yep. Uh, Aspire fragging out. Sombra is behind them. She is closing in on that EMP, so expect to see that probably within the next fight. Something uh, that is huge for a Zarya, especially when you're going up against an Ana, is that Zarya's bones cleanse you. So if you're anti, you yeah. can press someone and they get immediately cleansed. So that, I think that was a huge thing, is that they don't really have that Zarya, so they can't really counter it. Just the aggression coming out from uh, from Aspire here is is kind of I've never really seen a team be this quite this aggressive, but it really helps create a lot of space so that you can, they do don't really have to go for that fight under that bridge, which can be quite troublesome a lot of the times. Um, again, just continuing that aggression, uh, Aspire really is just not holding any punches here, and they're just rolling out. Uh, one thing to note though is that. Because of this as aggression, uh, I was gonna say that they had their sombra, but it looks like they switched over to uh, Brig instead. Um, yeah, communism is gonna have the alt advantage coming in this fight, and unless they keep switching, so ah, yeah, never mind. It looks like uh, they did. It's actually going to be in favor of Aspire here. So Aspire just continues to continues to push the aggression. Hanzo already back to 50, 64% on his ult, which he just initiated the fight with. And that's what Nano does with you, but that's also partly just a Hanzo thing. Um, so yeah, Communism really needs to figure out what they want to do here, because they are just getting... I, I, they I are think getting they got a bit of a the moment. competitive mentality, where they kind of just swapped everything and it threw their ult economy right on its head, because they had... They had Primal, they had EMP, and they had Genji Blade, and they trade them all out for yeah, uh, more of a GOATS know, comp. I mean, they do finally uh, stabilize for the first time. Um, they also have quite a few, quite a few more ults at the moment, uh, with Aspire only having that Hanzo ult, which can be strong on its own, but generally not. Um, yep, so there's the, uh, the, there's a Shatter coming out. Um, they're kind of using their ults a little early. I would have liked to have seen them. Uh, I'd like to have seen them let uh, Aspire push a little bit more. But yep. So now it looks like they're actually uh, co communism actually has an ultimate economy here coming out. They have grab. Um, he's just gonna have to watch hoodies on the diva. Uh, looks like. 
Okay. So nope, we're good. He's not. He's not in. Spot. Yep. Y yeah, 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 he's not in. Uh, so yeah, grab does come out here. Grab dragon. Uh, it doesn't grab. Have, they don't have any support cells on their side. D DJ Stanky was 99% at the time there. So really unfortunate, but what can you do? Uh, Mercy Haven't just stalling the best out the of cart them. for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I can't count the number of times I've been sitting in a grab. 99% with Zen, so I get out of that feels. Feels Batman. Uh, in the chat. However, Rialto is one of the hardest maps to really finish out here just because it kind of transforms into a 2 CP map here at the end with the uh, the spawn advantage that the defending team does get. However, that massive shatter here could really change the tides here. Um, Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they were able to fully clean it up with. Oh, Brig just lost their ult. That's huge. Uh, I'm sure everyone in this game knows how hard it can be to kill a ulting Brig. Brig, regardless of that uh, shatter coming out. Uh, but it, it does just not no follow up here besides a Lucio, which isn't going to really help you out here. Uh, uh, communism continues to stall here, but this dragon is going to force a lot of people off the point here. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look too good for for communism here. Spire doing a great job. Nice bubble, and uh, yeah, fine. Looks like this is gonna seal it up here because Lucio's not gonna be able to get away. Yeah, very dominant performance coming out from Aspire here. I, if you would ask me that if uh, what I thought Aspire's record was, I would have not said zero and three. So I'm very impressed. Um. Coming out from communism, uh, we didn't get to quite see the full like you know their strategy. They were they were switching quite a bit. Um, I think they switched comps fully like about twice, honestly. Um, they had they had the, they started off with a dive and everything looked well as soon as they picked that uh, Hansa right off the gate, but everything kind of fell apart after that first first pick there. Um, they they really just were not prepared for the aggression coming out from uh, from Aspire here and. I can't honestly blame them here. I'm, I'm sure that most of the times they've played, they have not felt that much pressure. And it's hard to perform under that much pressure. I don't know. What do you think here, Tinted, um, about kind of like the, just the aggression coming out from Aspire? Uh, Aspire did a really great job, and I think that's what communism kind of really struggled, especially as we saw that second phase where they just swapped everything, which kind of an odd thing but that does happen where you're kind of don't know what to do so you just you're just like let's change everything and let's hope that works so i think that's why communism's had a tough time dealing with is trying to really deal with this hyper aggressive it reminds me a lot of the uh philadelphia fusion Old, this honestly reminds me a lot of selfless if you uh if you watch yeah back then um they were yeah. they were the ones who kind of were got became famous for their just really aggressive in-your-face playstyle and uh, I think camping. we're kind of seeing a lot of this yeah coming out from Aspire here which honestly is pretty fun to watch but probably well, not too fun to play against because yeah. that's, that's communism here yeah. um, so yeah we'll see if communism kind of finds an answer for this aggression it seems at the moment they're just kind of like they just don't really know what they want to do about it um, Roadhog over there is looking for a pick right now. If you see him on that right-hand bridge, he is spotted out by the Genji, so uh, Diva's going heading over to deal with him. He's got to be careful that he doesn't get booted off, but looks like he's going to back up. Uh, as we look, the main fight's kind of going over the payload. They're getting a little bit. Hack comes out onto the, the Diva here. Um, I'm Hoodies does find a pick on the Winston, so that is their main tank, dive tank down here. Um, they have gotten it past the bridge, so they are safe from boots. But yeah, I'm Hoodies is just holding solid, holding solid here on this uh, right flank, and he's really kind of like drawing a lot of attention to himself. Um, but yeah, over in the main brawl, um, their main tank uh, TQ is just really kind of enforcing that payload. He's not letting them push it an inch after it got past that bridge. I think that dragon was a little early, but. You know, what can you do? Yep, I'm Hoodies here, just got dove by uh, both tanks and Mercy, but it uh, looks like the Rhine is going to be over on the thing, and a huge shatter coming out. Yep, so that's going to be a wasted, uh, a wasted uh, Valk here from coming out from Communism. It's uh, so good to see a uh, hog be able to be used, especially when he's 
you know, unfortunately, it's been really bad recently. Hopefully, hashtag fix Roadhog. Yeah. Yeah, this Sombra, Sombra does have EMP here, so, yep, there it is. I uh, expect that to help clean up the fight here. Yeah, Sombra couldn't do an anything about that. Sombra is so strong right now in this meta, just that infin infinite stealth really allowing you to pick your pick your moment, you know. But it actually, surprisingly, it looks like somehow uh, somehow communism came up on top despite the ults coming out from, from uh, Aspire. And now the alt economy is completely shifted in the favor of communism here. They have Blade, they can damage boost that with Mercy, they uh, basically act like a nano. They have EMP, they have Diva Bomb. EMP Diva Bomb is such a strong combo. Uh, they also have Winston all here. I, mean, I would expect a hack here. Looks like that was not quite what happened. Uh, but right now they're, the, they're back pressuring out that thing. Roadhog got hacked. Not much you can do. Both, both beats coming out here, so communism's beat will resolve second. And uh, Mercy resing that up that uh, Genji again. Don't know if that blade was quite needed, but you know, hindsight all with 2020 here. <laughs> so it looks like communism's found their footing here, and they are starting to push back. Uh, push back. Uh, oh god, what's their name? <laughs> Aspire. Aspire. <laughs> it's Aspire. Aspire. <laughs> Dude, it's so hard. All right. Anyway, bang the yank. Yeah. Uh, no swaps actually coming out from either team. It looks like they're gonna be sticking with this Roadhog at the moment. Oh, actually, as oh. I see that, um, Eddie switches over to uh, the Brig. It's probably to deal with this dive a lot more. Uh, Brig is just a great overall counter to those flanking DPS. You can really punish them for using their movement abilities a uh, second they get in your face. Uh, Ryan does get that ha that ult off before the hack, but he so. But it looks like it was kind of a scrappy fight, and Ryan will be going down here shortly. Um, Hoodies does answer back with the pick on the Genji, and he might get the Winston here. So Winston has nowhere to run. Um, back on the main cart, Brig is just kind of helping out, just sustain on the cart, and there's not really much the other team can do here. Diva does get hacked, but it looks like they're going to be falling back, and uh, Somber will probably just be farming up for EMP again. So both Sombra's relatively close in ult charge here. I would expect it to come out in the next fight. Uh, with Communism's ult probably coming out a little bit a little bit before that. I would like to see the blade come out with the EMP, because otherwise this is what happens. Uh, there's really not much again you can do once he gets hacked. Yep, there it is. We'll see if they can still finish him off here, but with the hack, but it looks like that's going to be resolving in a few seconds here. Roadhawk should be able to get that healed right back up. Now it's up for Aspire to come out with the EMP here. Rally does come out, but she gets hacked, so she doesn't have that shield to hide behind. Uh, we are missing both tanks at the moment from Communism. Uh, Winston just got back. Dragon does come out, going to bond the heart, and they'll answer right back with uh, Diva Bomb. Diva Bomb does find one, finds Halo Spartan. Unfortunately, he couldn't avoid it. Uh, Brig is just brawling on the point here, making it very difficult for anyone to, you know, really do what they want to. Mercy just gonna, Mercy just gonna go ahead and reset. So overall, uh, Spire has done a really good job stabilizing here. Um, they just made the one swap to Brig, and that was really <coughs> all it took for them to uh, kind of regain tempo here. Brig is just a very hard a very hard uh, hero to deal with, so it's going to force out the uh, swap off the dive. Uh, Tugash is very unfortunate jump here. Probably going to result in uh, the fight loss. Oh, here, but we'll see he got body here. blocked. He got b body blocked by the D.Va oh, right yeah. off. Yeah. Oh, There's some 200 yeah, IQ plays right there. Play. Yeah, very heads up play. From my hoodies. My hoodies will get d there, but... Uh, I, th I see this getting pushed all the way through the second point. It's not really much a team can do when a break is that when they're down players and a break's enforcing the cart. Blizzard, please nerf. Uh, I agree. Yeah, break's still an insane win rate across all tiers, but that's that is for a different day. Um, it looks like we're gonna have <laughs> the EMP and uh, EMP and coalescence up here for Aspire here. Um, Hanzo gets his ult, Hanzo throws it. That seems to be the theme with 
this uh, with Halo Spartan Tons will play here. Um, he's just going to be laying into this uh, D.Va here. Fortunately, it doesn't look like Cody's had any D Matrix to help save him, but what can you do? Um, Rally coming out again, that just makes it very hard for anyone to really go down as armor does negate a large amount of damage. Expecting to see the grab come up here very shortly here as Cody's is kind of falling back here. He probably he has a lot of matrix left, so it's up for him to burn that burn that diva out. We'll be seeing a stagger coming out on that diva there. Um, letting her kind of come out. And uh, the dragon is probably going to help that spearhead this next engagement right now. Um, as uh, as this, this spire comes out. Here comes the hack. Zarya is down 200 health and Zarya gets pinned. It's probably going to be Zarya here, which is which is a, a sad thing because Zarya, when Zarya gets her charge, you really don't want her down. That's a huge pick coming off from the spire here. Kind of gets booped around there and uh, in the end misses a shatter, but and will die for it actually. So. Both Coalescents come out here, the beams are being crossed. Uh, just an all-out brawl at the moment. I would give the upper hand a communism right now, and yeah, it looks like the, the, the kill feed lights up blue here. Uh, Halo Spartan falls, Diva's try. Diva does get remaxed here, but Grab comes out, and that will be all for them. May comes out from Red, uh, from communism, or Aspire to here to fall, as well as Reaper, but there's only so much you can do once half your team is dead and stalling. Lucio will come out just to solve for a few extra moments here, but I expect to see see it tied up here. So it looks like Aspire held them a little longer, so, uh, <coughs> but uh, it's good to see Communism back in the game here. We'll have actually a, a, a relatively decent match coming up. What do you think, Tintin? What was your biggest takeaway from that, that attack here? Um something that I saw was like both teams kind of counterpicking each other. We saw Spire pull out that brig and then we saw the uh, the side of communism switching to that kind of style that goats comp. Not exactly with the uh, full goats but definitely keep it that. I like what both teams are doing is that they were kind of... Well I like to uh, I like to say that both team, both the Spire and communism were doing is like a musical. You just go bam, 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 bam. Next scene, next scene, next scene. So just they were going through one thing to another thing. So Hansel, then Diva, then we'll go in with a nano boosted Rhine. Like they were just doing everything. Both teams were doing everything. They had it set planned. So I think both teams, especially on the side of communism, being able to pick up and they start to get their flow a bit better and start to get in the rhythm of things. That's a huge part of Overwatch is that rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing I would say. Maybe a Aspire needs to like tone back on it. It's just like a lot of times I saw the ults they would get, they would just toss them immediately, which isn't isn't necessarily bad. But I uh, quite a few Hansel ults I think could have been used better. But again, they still had a very solid defense. Um, coming out here again, Hoodies is on that right flank here, trying to get some hook. Uh, hook doesn't quite reach there, but it will push it across. Wow. Ooh, coming out of one merit there. Uh, you can see that one lining up there. That's just the thing you gotta be very careful about. Uh, this bridge is brutal for environmental kills. You have to push that payload over there. There's no way around that, and what can you do, man? That's why dive is, I think, personally, a very good option on this burn course. You're just having an, a mobility option, but when you're running kind of a goat's comp, that is just not available to you. Uh, Hoodies is gonna be looking for that pick on the right again. Uh, we'll see if he gets it. That move does not come through quite this time, but Hanzoel does. Hanzoel is going to cut off their escape for a little bit here, but it does not look like communism need it as they push forward in here. They got to be careful not to forget the point. Uh, close. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, they're going to push him back to the bridge here. Uh, Boop coming off here, which is going to take Halo Spartan. I am I am a happy man when I see Lucio Boops. Oh, Ana just barely escaping death there. there. Lucky that little gondola was right below her. Um, hammer, hammer down coming out from from Aspire here. Doesn't really find anyone. You gotta watch for, uh, for communism shatter here. Hits 
hits two. Uh, he does get counter charge. Captain's left there, so they can't quite. He can't quite get that charge to be against all. But looks like Captain comes out with a huge, uh, huge Roadhog all. Deep DJ really wanted that. Seeing <laughs> both uh, teams coming up that hog it's, puts a smile on my face. So it looks like a fierce brawl is gonna come out right over this bridge. They grab comes out. I'd expect to see this cleaned up right quick. All right, so the Contalo will continue to roll here. Uh, looking at both teams' ult economy, and something two ults to notice here is Earthshatter is back up for Aspire. So that could just end the fight just like that. And they also almost have Grab. Um, grab as well as the whole hog. So that is a lesser known combo, but still quite effective. Um, Hero has really got to be careful. Here's the Grab coming out, and here's whole hog. Uh, the na a huge nade lands, and Shatter falls up shortly after. Um, all the ults coming out from this fire here. I would definitely expect to see this fall to Kami's fall here. Craig uh, anti, there is just really not much they can do. DJ will stall out the inevitable here a little bit, but yeah. Overall, very good push coming out from Kami's here. Uh, with just a minute to go, they got it about halfway through second. So definitely a definitely a winnable position as first on Rialto is generally. Pretty hard point to get through. Uh, however, we haven't really seen that many fights break out in the courtyard, which is generally where that stall comes in, as the spawn for defending team is rather close to that end checkpoint. Um, what do you think there, Tintip? Do you see anything that stood out to you? Um, something that I noticed, and I think communism is doing really well now, is that they are really, like I said, beginning of this first round, is they have that rhythm. So they're able to, once they got that first team fight, they, you know, their spirits kind of like lifted and they're like, we got this. And they just kind of started brawling it out. So I think what happened the first two maps, they're like, whoa, another team that's super aggressive. And they were like, what do we do? And then they just said, you know what, we'll play your game too. And I think that's what's so fun to see two hyper aggressive teams go at it is just to see who kills the fastest. It's just like a bloodbath. It's like the Hunger Games, honestly. Yeah, hungry and here. <laughs> um, the widow, the widow pick coming out from uh, coming out from communism here, which is interesting since we haven't seen it right now. Actually, double snipers. Uh, Reaper is quite susceptible to a widow headshot as his hip headshot hitbox is quite big. But with the aggression that we've seen coming out of Aspire, I don't know how much room or how much pressure is going to be put on this widow, which that honestly can make a whole difference here. So hoodies is already on the flank there with the Reaper. And he can come out at any moment, and there's not really much to stop him other than a sleep dart. So yeah, uh, Spire just handily pushing through here. Uh, neither of the snipers coming from communism have found a pick. Uh, just as I say that, there's the Reaper with his massive headshot hitbox taken out. Apollo has um, been playing out of his mind. Widowmaker right now, but he was Zarya on the last <laughs> on attack, yeah, and it was sure. the tracking's impressive. Oof. <laughs> Nice shot, shot on Lucio. Not an easy shot to make. Man. So, uh, yeah. Wow! Apollo is a will nice. Yeah, Apollo popping off here. Granted, three of them, two of them were the same person, but, you know. Just goes to show, he was he was ready for that reaper. And something you uh, mentioned, uh, Poyo, is that the swap courtyard is here. long. So I yeah, think it's the interesting to see is an triple. Spot. So, yeah, Aspire coming out, but, uh, counter... Counter Dragons here, uh, almost takes out TQ here on the right, but he was able to hide in that corner just long enough to uh, be safe here. So yeah, Widow falling, so now Aspire doesn't have to play quite as many weird angles as they would before. So they will push him up to the bridge here, uh, but well, then we will definitely see one more fight coming out here as it does take a while for that card to run around. Supercharger coming out, Nano coming out. This Arissa is just shitting out damage at the moment. Um, Lucio, not quite sure what that's going to accomplish. Maybe he'll come and duel the Widow. We'll see. Um, no, uh, instead they sent D.Va to go do that job and uh, she will get D Mac to a SMG and a headshot by Apollo here. Quite impressive. Oh my god, Apollo. What a shot. 
That's one thing you gotta love about this courtyard. Yeah, it's is that always it's great super to see. long, so having that Ana, Widow, and Hanzo, you just have complete reign of everything. Lucio dancing around here, and he will fall to a follow here. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna delay his fire here a little bit. And as I said, anything can really happen here if a fight devolves in that courtyard, as it does really give uh, the defending team spawn advantage. And you know you can't afford to just you know trade at this point. So both both um, Ryan will have his ult here. Is just whether or not they can pressure that Arisa shield enough to get that ult down. Uh, does get blocked by them and uh, dragons and uh, beat come out from communism here, but it will be followed up here. Um, two picks, they are even at the moment. All right, communism is. It's hard to say here. Uh, Ryan is anti. Grab comes out, doesn't find anyone, but is zoning people out right now. Uh, communism doing an overall great job here. That Orisa is really carrying that main brawl right there, as that fortify ability can really soak up a lot of damage, especially with an Ana, because that is basically you get basically the damage reduction of Nano who's coming out, and when she fortifies and then <coughs> after that gets Nanoed, that's a lot of time spending that 50% reduction state, and there's really not much they can do to burn her down. Um, we're gonna see the engage with the uh, the. Dragons doesn't find anyone, and Supercharger comes out. Uh, unfortunately, Aspire does not have the option to just fight this out, so they will have to go with Horus and run into it, but it does get taken out. Ryan on, Nano on for Ryan, so he will get his Shatter this fight. Uses it, doesn't just kills Lucio, but it looks like Aspire will take this fight here. I would be surprised if they don't get it to at least second. However, in overtime, they will not get any extra time coming up onto this onto the second checkpoint and they will need to push it all the way to where communism did in order to take this map so at this point it is anyone's game all communism really needs to do at this point is just build up a couple of game winning and, and ultimates and just all press y at the same time um infrasite's coming out from uh from communism here uh we will see what happens right now as it's aspire has the ult advantage as that yeah gets traded for the thing Huge boop there, coming out, will take two. I'm at surprise, that's gonna take out your main tank there. Oh, hero almost getting <laughs> without a main tank. Uh, huge anti, but no one falls up. All right, yep. Communism's gonna have to here, take this right here. Communism coming out on top. Moran's gonna try yep. stall and gets shattered. So communism Damn. does take the last map. Well played on them, they really turned it around here after getting kinda kind of run over on defense so they, well, they, they figured out how to really deal with them there yeah i was about to say i mean they uh, they need like these two teams se seemed pretty evenly matched coming in on rialto and what they needed there at the end was they needed somebody to step up and just take over and <laughs> on defense uh and attack i think you can apollo, say that apollo right? just uh kind of took the game into his own hands that combined with a couple of just incredible boops just just put you know put the last nail in the coffin there for for uh aspire yeah aspire there was actually a few incredible boops coming out from both i think we saw two two-man boops uh mm -hmm. from yep. both lucios on both teams uh i do like a boop boops. match Just, he was still finding picks before they could really do get on to him effectively and shut him out. So, yeah, Apollo really kind of carrying that last one for his team there. But overall, well played overall from all both teams here. Um, yeah, but uh, the map goes to Aspire. So, Tins, any last thoughts just on overall play from, you know? Um, me being as a captain, um, something that I love to do is during game t uh, downtime when we're switching out subs is, is to think what are we not utilizing correctly here and something that I saw and I don't think that we caught is communism's utilization of the Ana which we did not see out of them in the first two maps so them realizing that the Ana is a huge part especially in this meta with that anti nade against goats console to just completely shut it down and just stop it dead in its track so seeing communism being able to 
swap into that Ana and being able to use it effectively, I think that's why they, that's a huge factor of why they want Yalto. How about you, Swift? I know you were doing camera work a lot, but did you, uh, did you catch anything in particular that you thought was a very, like, defining part of uh, either team's play? Yeah, yeah, man, I thought there were, um, so we, we talked a lot about how aggressive Aspire was, especially coming out on Volskaya, um, Nepal, and through the first couple of points here in Rialto. But throughout those, they were never reckless, right? It always seemed measured. It always seemed like there was an objective and a goal, and they never panicked. The What I saw there on the, the final point there in overtime was very different. You know, you saw everybody kind of uh, just trying to secure kills all over the place. At one point, I saw their Ana trying to duel <laughs> trying to duel the Widowmaker, you know, instead of healing uh, mm -hmm. instead of healing their tanks. So it was it, it was just kind of a, a very different feel. It seemed like they may have lost sight of what they were trying to do. Some um, composure there, yeah. Right, yeah, and it seemed like uh, communism kind of gathered themselves, right? There was a they had a, they were able to take a breather, won a couple of fights, got mm -hmm. themselves back in the right mindset and clawed their way back to take a map away. Uh, lose the week, but mm -hmm. come out with uh, come out with a point. And at the end of the season, that yeah. that one point could mean everything. So, pretty impressive, pretty impressive showing from both teams. Honestly, I mean, Aspire yeah. coming out showing that their record of zero and three isn't the whole story, uh, and communism no, not no, rolling no. over and taking it easy. So, yeah, good games. Yeah, one thing about that Aspire aggression for sure was they always engaged. With that was almost one thing that they always did. They always tried to throw their other team off balance and. Well, that wasn't necessarily communism approach. Communism was more about like the alt combos. Uh, Aspire was more about we just want to use an alt and kind of just you know, just win a fight here, you know, win a fight there, and just keep them rolling. And that was kind of their style. So it was kind of the, interesting to see the two different styles of the teams. But both teams definitely knew what they wanted to do. Um, that was one thing I definitely noticed coming out. They always had set. They always had set strats. They always knew what they were gonna go. And, whether or not they could execute it kind of came down to their own play as well as how well the other team was playing. Yeah, for and sure. I think overall, Aspire just did, just in this in this case just uh, applied their game plan a little better than Communism did. So let me ask you, Poyo, with with so. that in mind, one of the mm -hmm. things we like to do is kind of break down what our who our MVPs were for the match uh, or for the evening. So I'll ask you, man, who who'd you give the uh, the Poyo star to? This is. Uh, <laughs> Very good play, I mean, play overall, and I think that really, really helped kind of take it home today. What about you? Do you have a, what about the Swift Star? The Swift Star. Um, Who do you pin it on? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one, man. I I, I really I really like rewarding um, tank play. I think it uh, I think it creates it creates space for the for the DPS and the healers to work. Oh, for sure. For so. Sure. Uh, I think there was a lot. Uh, there was a lot coming out from I'm Hoodie on the on the Diva and earlier maps and the Roadhog, especially here on Rialto. So uh, I gotta I gotta respect the Roadhog Divas of the world with uh, <laughs> with I'm Hoodie. What about what about you, Tinted? Where's sure, you? Sure. Where's the where's the Tinted Star? Where's headed? The Tinted Star. The Tinted Star. The Tinted uh, where's Star. Where's one of your? Where's one of your <laughs> stars of your galaxy? Yeah. Um. I'll I will uh share. I'll donate one. And uh, I think the uh, main tank for Aspire, uh, TQ, TQ, did a really great job, especially on that first map on Blue Sky, being able just to get picks after picks, doing a great job, being able to hold his own ground. He's really not like back on. He, he said, "I'm staying here. You're gonna do it. Whether you like it or not." I think that's. I kind of love seeing that Ryan play. That hyper aggressive, like, fight me, like, take me on one on one. You won't, and like, just <laughs> coming out and brawl. You won't. Yeah. Yeah. He was definitely not reckless, but he was definitely being very aggro, being smart. Yeah, and, and he really, like he really that. 
that really uh, let his Zen and his and his McCree kind of like, you know, sit in the back and just really play in the damage without really having much pressure on him. So yeah, I, yeah. Overall, both teams. It's really hard to nail down, you know, one player to really give it to us. At the end of the day, Overwatch is a team game. Absolutely. But, yeah, those were our. That was. Those were the standouts for me. Exciting. I'd say all of those three. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I mean, uh, great maps overall. We are. Um, Happy to bring them tonight. It was it was a good time, guys. I enjoyed streaming with you with you both. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I know it was kind of last minute, but. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Well, fun. you know we're we're building up we're building up the stream team here, making sure we've got uh, got coverage for all of the games going on in the Overwatch Xbox community. Um, this map, this game tonight with Aspire and Communism was the first of the week, but it's definitely not the last. We've got three mm -hmm. games going on tomorrow, uh, eight o'clock, eight thirty, and ten p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So. Check those out. Those will be either on this main channel here that you're watching or on some of the channels that we do host on this main channel. So be sure, uh, hit the follow button. Give us a subscribe if you think we deserve it. I think we do. But you know, who knows? Maybe you didn't like, uh, <laughs> didn't like listening to Tinted or something. It's hard to say. But uh, <laughs> I think Tinted's I'm sorry. analysis was top tier. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a hard time. We like to have fun here in the community. If you're new, if you're not a yeah. part yep. of it. Check out the links down below. You should find our Discord, our website, uh, or you can send a message to any of the three of us. We'll our names are on the screen there. Chat. Yeah, we'll give you we'll give you all the info you need. Thanks for sticking around with us, guys. It's been a fun evening. I've been your host, Swift sixty three. Joining me tonight was uh, El Pollo Loco, Tented Galaxy. Before we sign off, guys, Pollo, any last words? Ah, uh, no. Just thanks for having me on. It's a blast to stream, and I always love a good game of Overwatch. Right on. Tinted, anything before we head off, brother? Uh, nothing really, but uh, just to, glad to see some high level Overwatch, you know, kind of local play on, you know, on, on a large scale. That's not exactly up to Overwatch League, which is <laughs> that's cool to see that we have this awesome community. Well, we're we getting get there. We get to see games weekly. We get to see games weekly. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome to see just a bunch of teams every week brawling it out and having community fun it's yeah, such a great yeah. pleasure if you if you are competitive and haven't been able to play in a tournament oh x is definitely for me oh for sure and um you you mentioned about watching games every week we do also do the overwatch xbox community breakdown that's going that goes live every tuesday night 8 p.m eastern standard time uh tune in check it out we recap the the week's uh, any community news coming out from the prior week any xbox news that we've seen on the wire up on reddit uh, and we talk about upcoming events. We do have an event on the horizon. There's a 1v1 tournament coming up here in a couple of weeks. If you're interested, there's a couple of links on our website uh, where you can sign up in our Discord. So I think that just about covers it. So we'll go ahead and sign off this evening, um, 10 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. I've been Swift63. Keep grinding, guys. <laughs>